listening to the Deep Purple Podcast, a fan podcast about one of the most legendary bands of all time, Deep Purple. We take a look at the music, history, and people behind the band Deep Purple and beyond. Welcome to the Deep Purple Podcast, the first and only podcast devoted to one of the greatest bands in rock history, Deep Purple. Today's episode is episode number 244, the Deep Purple Podcast Christmas Special. It's a purple full life. And coming to you from the suburbs of Chicago where the sun sets at 4.33 p.m., I'm your host, Nathan Beaudry. And coming to you from the suburbs of Providence, I'm your co-host, John Lasso the Moon Matola. (laughs) All right, Rich. <laughs> I'm going to call it because we didn't decide on an order beforehand. Rich, you're oh, up. Boy. Why is the moon an asshole? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's all I heard. I'm uh, Rich Inappropriate Shaler uh, and uh, happy to be here from the suburbs and outskirts of John Matola. All right, Scott. Coming to you from the sports-ridden streets of Las Vegas, I am Scott No Check Engine Light Haskin. <laughs> Still, <laughs> no, it's it's off. Uh, this is the first podcast I've done with you guys in a while where I haven't had it come on. Um, of course, I haven't gone anywhere in like two weeks, but that's beside the point. Well, hopefully, uh, it's a Christmas miracle and it doesn't light up like a Christmas tree. I'm hoping. Peter. Hi, folks. Merry Christmas from the uh, festive uh, suburb of the big city, right down the road from the Bought Off Williams house. So uh, Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mr. Mr. Roback. Yeah, I'm coming to you from outside Nick's bar, outside of Pottersville. (laughs) So (laughs) Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. And last, but certainly not least, Mr. Coldwell. All right. Uh, Merry Christmas and uh, coming to you from the sure to be frozen solid wastes by the time this airs uh, just north of uh, of John. Uh, Steve lobbying heavily to co-host the Slave Raider episode Coldwell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait. I had to since we recorded that so long ago, I was like, Slave Raider. oh, yeah, yeah. It took me a second. <laughs> shockingly not my first exposure to slave writer oh yeah i'm not surprised your 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 knowledge runs very deep and let me just say uh coldwell great christmas name very true Wint- wintry wintery wonderful you're the, you're the yeah. cold miser hmm. yeah it's it's and uh easily uh easily mocked by school children everywhere cold smell hot smell <laughs> whichever way you want to go with it. i don't i don't think there's any name that is safe from that hmm. fair what what is everybody else's what about John, Richie what, Sucksmith? What, what? <laughs> <laughs> that was sorry. what they called you? <laughs> no. no he, he's a patron. <laughs> yeah, we did patron. bully him I just thought it would be an amazing together. coincidence. <laughs> Cold smell. <laughs> Scott, what did they call you? Uh, I think the best I ever got was actually on a piece of mail. It was shortly after a really bad car accident I was in, and it's the only time it's ever happened. I got an email or a, a piece of mail for Scott has been. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's good. So, so the kids at school didn't come up with that one. That's probably really good. Yeah, no, I, I I don't even remember where it came from. I just remember seeing that and going. I I was like in really bad shape after the car accident too. It was oh. like the most appropriate timing that Rich sent that to me. <laughs> <laughs> and little did I know that it was little did I know his real name is Scott never was <laughs> oh. well done rather be a has been than a never was there you go who else who else had a good uh a good playground taunt name hmm. I don't know I mean I don't know if it was good but uh there was the old uh John John leprechaun went to school with nothing on oh <laughs> That one, yeah. loved hearing that one and the less creative like hey john that's the, that's what they call a toilet isn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks all right yeah I, I as a compliment to that i got a lot of the uh scotty bathroom tissue and scotty paper towels and mm-hmm. uh that, oh. yeah I, I empathize yeah yeah I mean, our generation uh if if they were going after the first name it was always stevie wonder oh mm-hmm. that could be a lot worse things to be called than that yeah. yeah. 
I wish. I could never hear any of the names through the uh, the locker once I shoved them in it. So <laughs> <laughs> I was always called Nate the Great because of the the books that were popular. And then as I as I got into high school, it was more Nate Dog because of the rapper. And then that kind of prevailed. It kind of bounced back and forth. But which, which none, none of that's bad. No, none yeah. of that's bad. Those were good. I remember one one of my friends tried to make uh, instead of Baudry tried to make bonehead stick, but it just didn't catch on. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't oh, close might, enough. Might you know? now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bonehead. Ah. It's early yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome everybody to our annual Christmas special. Um, you know, usually this time of year we do a, a Christmas episode, and we just try to do something a little more light and and fun, and we're, we're hanging out with some old friends as we did last year. Um, this year, uh, we're going to be doing, uh, more of the same, but, uh, as the, as the title suggests, there's a little bit of, well, sort of a little twist. And we've reached out to some of our patrons and, and listeners for some of their stories as well. But before we get into that, some ways you can support our show, um, our show is 100% listener supported and ad free. So if you receive some value for our show, please consider giving us some value back. Uh, one way you can support our show is by leaving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Guys, we're so close. I checked it right before the episode. I'm going to refresh it one more time just to see if there's another epi- another uh, review. No, no Christmas miracle. I'll check it again before the end of the episode to see if there is one, but probably not. Um, you can buy some merch at our Etsy store. You can become a patron on Patreon or on PayPal for as little as $1 a month. That gets you access to our patrons-only Discord. Um, and of course, our five star review, our 100th five star review gets you um, uh, a Deep Purple podcast uh, ditty bag that we will send out to you. Uh, you can also donate uh, Cash App, dollar sign DPPOD, or support us on support, support, support us on Kofi. <laughs> My New England was coming out because I'm hanging out with all you guys. Um, so um, we do have one um, uh, patron upgrade. Patron upgrade. That's right. Peter from Illinois. And I, I apologize because I think he upgraded a little ways back, but we're so messed up with the order we're doing these episodes in uh, as we wrap up the year that uh, we may have missed that. So Peter from Illinois upgrading to the $10 someone came to here. Um, he says, hi, guys. My card expired. Uh, time for an upgrade. Best wishes, Peter from Illinois. So that's a great trend. If your card expires and you get the notice from Patreon, just uh, double or triple or quadruple your your donation how's that sound hey oh i think it's a trend i think it's going to catch on and i hope it does because uh, i was pricing out the new computer today <laughs> um <laughs> as i've been talking about for years mm-hmm. and hopefully we can uh, make that happen in the new year um also uh speaking of our patrons at the executive level at the in memoriam tier the late gerald jerry kelly and family at the 25 dollar uncommon man tier we have ovis Nakfi and purple maniac at the 15 squid tier, we have Alan. At the turn it up to, oh, I'm sorry, at the $10 good doctor tier, we have Mike Catan. At the turn it up to $11 tier, Clay Wambacher, Frank Teal, Gard Mortensen, Mickelstein, Will Porter, PHDPP. And at the $10 Someone Came tier, we have Ryan M., Jeff Bryce, Victor Campos, Better Call Saul Evans, and then, of course, our newly upgraded patron, Peter from Illinois. Patron Upgrade. And at the Hughes Oween by 2033 tier, we have the one, the only, Fielding Fowler. finally debut the shortened version <laughs> it took so long <laughs> it took until christmas to get that one out to everybody oh. the christmas and, and it's still funny as ever <laughs> <laughs> and um one last thing before we get into it at the well, actually two last things apple podcast review um let's see what do we have here we have oh, we do have a review i'm sorry this one is coming to us from shamley in London, UK, five stars. This, uh, the subject is outstanding. This is a great podcast. Deep Purple have always had a rich blend of genius and flaws, so the basic material is inherently fascinating. The two presenters are genuine fans and treat the band and its many offshoots and tentacles with humor and good judgment. I particularly appreciate that they give the Mark IV lineup the respect it deserves. The main diet is album reviews. 
Everyone has their own personal opinions on music, but I find they are pretty much on the money. There is much more, though, such as brilliant episode about the bizarre New Deep Purple in 1980 and their sonic archaeology that allowed us to hear Bolin's last show properly. Maybe they could do the same job on the Mark show, Mark IV show in Liverpool. Thanks for all your work, Nathan and John. Looking forward to what you will make of the same uh, I'm sorry, of some of the other byways of the Deep Purple family tree. The Phenomena albums, Glenn's Time with KLF, MGM, or even Sam Brown's Stop album. So, thank you. You're great. Genius great. and Flaws. That's a uh, that's a solid title <laughs> for a, a Deep Purple documentary. Yeah, or, yeah, or a podcast. Uh, even or a podcast. <laughs> or a description Purple, of you two. Genius and Flaws. <laughs> yeah, or us. <laughs> more, more on the Flaws side. If we ever um, wanted to rebrand. But we do have to um, check this one out and uh, see. Is this the 100th review? Damn. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. That was such a... The last... I know that the 100th review is going to come and it's like, this show good. And it's going to... They're going to be the 100th review. But all these really like, oh. thoughtful reviews and that's going to be the one that... I feel like the gauntlet just got thrown down. <laughs> show. show good. Show good. Five Fine, star. Guys. Lower the bar. <laughs> it's really so it's good, the way that me. you respect tentacles that it's... keeps me coming back to the show. I, I love that. You have lots of respect for tentacles. Go <laughs> good, me. Deep purple link. Yes. Fire bad. Deep purple podcast. Good. <laughs> I hope. I hope it's from Deep Purple New York. That would just be a perfect way to make it to 100. I also, yeah, I'm, I wonder oh, yeah. if there, there might be patrons out there that haven't written reviews. So if you're a patron and you haven't written a review on Apple Podcasts, this could be your moment. Um, so one last thing. Glenn Hughes is coming to the Arcata in St. Charles, Illinois, February 10th, John's birthday. Doors at 6.30 p.m. I have procured four tickets. Why four? I don't know. Just... <laughs> Because I figured I'd be able to offload them. So John is still undecided as to whether he's coming up. If anybody else wants to, let me know. Um, everyone here on the call, except for Scott, is going to see him like six days later right near them. So I figured there probably would be a huge uh, uh, rush to come up here. But Or if there's any listeners in the area that would like to uh, get a ticket, they're pretty nice seats right up in the little, uh, what do you call it? That little, like little balcony? You know, Loge. Yeah, where the, you know, where the lady would have her little opera glasses. Balcony. The guys from the Muppet Balcony. Show. <laughs> yeah. The opera box? <laughs> yeah, it's like an opera box, kind of. <laughs> Hopefully we are not assassinated. Um, the Lincoln but... spot. Yeah. yeah, the Lincoln yeah. spot. Yeah. Exactly. We got the special right. Lincoln. Maybe that's why I got such a good deal on the tickets. Mm. <laughs> Worst case, you can always you know reach out to the Pot of Thunder guys and invite them out to the John Free John's birthday celebration. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. We, it'll just be me and the three guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> me, Andy, Nick, and Chris. <laughs> is the house big enough that I don't have to share room with John or the dog? Um. Yes. <laughs> so Rich looks like he's thinking about it. Well, if you say yes, <laughs> do you consider the garage a room? <laughs> <laughs> the house is is big yeah we have we have sort of two guest rooms so you like unfinished basements right <laughs> i've slept in worse you like sleeping with your head resting against a boiler don't you <laughs> <laughs> all right well here it is guys again the christmas season um we were joking beforehand about the fact that this is a takeoff on uh it's a wonderful life um Peter Gardeau, have you seen It's a Wonderful Life? No, I have not seen it. I so, I kind of get the, the gist of it. And uh, someone put the Beavis and Butthead uh, clip someplace. Yes. Where basically, ah, that dude is going to kill himself. Cool. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's my that's my probably I've been exposed to that a lot more, but I actually hadn't seen It's a Wonderful Life until I don't know, 15 something years ago. And um I don't know, my initial reaction was I was like, this is the most depressing movie I've ever seen. And then I tried to watch it again last night and then I fell asleep because I was really tired. And uh so just trying to give myself a little refresh on it. But it's like one of those things that's so ingrained into pop culture that whether you've seen it or not, you know the plot, you know the the story. Right. It's, yeah, it's I, almost I like the... two different movies, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I just saw it for the first time actually last year. 
um, after my uh, my cousin-in-law many years ago at Christmas dinner uh, put me off to it with an extensive Frank Capra's a socialist rant. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, at fifty-one, oh. I finally saw it. Oh, there you go. So I don't I don't feel so bad. Hmm. I, but I, I think um... I've seen the end of it. I don't know that I've actually ever seen the entire movie. Hmm. Wow. Never I, seen it. And no, Rich, you haven't seen, right? Nope. Okay. Oh, so it's more than more than I would, would have thought had not seen it, but Well, I mean, I don't think a deep knowledge of the movie has to really uh be nobody has to have that for for us to really get the spirit of the episode. It's a, yeah, it's a yeah I, I think concept, I think yeah. it's a wonderful life is one of those things where if you haven't seen it, you've certainly seen you know, 50 or 60 different sitcom cartoon, you know, you know takeoffs of it. You've, you've right. got the gist. Yeah. It's yeah. like if you hadn't seen the Christmas Carol or if you hadn't seen Casablanca or something, it's like, it's so ingrained in everything that we consume that, you know, you know, the idea. Yeah. You've, um, you've seen some kind of, um, um, you know, pop culture riff on it. Yeah. So I, I, I was taken with, with, with watching yeah. it yesterday yeah. the the um how the second part of it or whatever was very reminiscent. Well, I shouldn't say reminiscent of um Back to the Future 2 is very reminiscent of the, you know, <laughs> he's like wandering around like Pottersville, you're just screwy. And he's like all just yelling at everybody and just so like, I, what do you mean you don't know who I am? And he's just getting all pissed off at everybody. And mm. I was like, yeah, that's very uh, Back to the Future 2. Never saw that either. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the first one all right gardo's the first to get voted off get him out <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on i still think a great podcast would be would be the gardo doing a podcast like ne called never saw it and just like <laughs> finally describe watching describing. <laughs> i want him to describe what he movie. thinks it would be about and not yeah, actually. He can, <laughs> yeah, that's He's that's like, good that would be fun this is what Without i think happens it. yeah <laughs> Yeah, Jaws is about a dentist. <laughs> I did see Jaws. <laughs> okay. You have seen Jaws? Not, but not I saw Rocky. It in the theater. Oh, okay. yeah, I've never seen Rocky, though. No. Yeah, that oh, to wow. me is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I saw Jaws at the drive in, and I really wish. I would have seen it, you know, when they're when they're showing it, where you sit in an inner tube on the water. Yeah, that's a great idea. That oh, would yeah. be the best way to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Do they wow. actually do it like that? Yeah, yeah they do yeah. it all the time. Yeah, yeah they do it uh, on the Cape. Oh, nice. They have like little roped off areas and they tie down the uh, the inflatables and you lay in it or you sit in them while you're watching the movie. I don't know that I'd make it all the way through. <laughs> yeah, <that's funny. laughs> no, because Rich would get some snorkel gear and he'd just be swimming under bumping people's little inner tubes. Damn and... straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And of course, so, yeah. I know uh, I know John and uh, and Rich and I all be killing or kicking ourselves afterwards if I don't bring it up. Uh, one of the great it's a wonderful life references is, is in uh there's a Simpsons episode where Bart and Lisa uh dig up the alternate happy ending to Casablanca <laughs> and in the end they get paid to to rebury it along with the killing spree ending of It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's also there's also a great SNL skit with the lost the lost alternate ending. ending. Yeah, yeah, where they go and beat the hell out of Potter. I got a piece of you, Potter. <laughs> Which so, version of SNL was that? Uh, that was um, uh, Phil, Phil Hartman. Uh, oh, the good days, okay. yeah. Yeah, Phil Dana Hartman Carvey. plays the, the old banker and Carvey doing Jimmy Stewart. And Den it was the Dennis Miller years. Dennis Miller. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nice. That's good times. Dennis yeah. Miller. That's was acceptable. Doing Jimmy Dennis, oh, Car Carvey no, was doing. Dennis Carvey's Miller doing Jimmy was Stewart. Harry. Yeah. Yep. I, th I thought Lovitz was Potter for some reason. Oh, you're right. You are. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Hmm. All right. So, yeah. So what we figured we would do uh, this week is I've gotten some great um, text and audio from a bunch of listeners um, with, with their takes, but wanted to kind of open it up to everybody to say, it's a wonderful lifestyle. What, what would your life be like? If Deep and, Purple had never existed, what would have changed? You know, the people I, yeah. you would have met, the things you would, would, would have done or wouldn't have done. 
Um, and then of course, how would music be different? How would music have changed? Um, and I, yeah, and I think that that's uh, that's probably we should probably have brought up too. I mean, just the general. I mean, we've probably gotten it by now, but um, as everybody may or may not know, the whole episode was based on the film. Is about uh, uh, Jimmy Stewart plays George Bailey, so a guy that's basically given up his whole life to serve his community, and then when it all kind of turns on him and he feels like nobody appreciates it. He has thoughts of suicide on Christmas Eve. He's visited by a guardian angel who shows him all the lives that he's touched and what would life be like if he had never existed. So that kind of, uh, you know, gave us the, epi the idea for the episode. That last part is what Nate just said. What would, what would it be like if Deep Purple never existed in the world, in our own lives, uh, just kind of whatever we take it to mean. And that thought that would make a great conversation. Mm -hmm. So if all, all the remaining members of Deep Purple are standing on a bridge right now, <laughs> like, we're going to end it all. Um, nope, push J to JLT. <laughs> <laughs> our billions of album sales meant nothing. <laughs> Yeah, then, then Coverdale gets distracted by a naked woman <laughs> decides not to. <laughs> Some large-breasted woman jogging across yeah. the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. In the snow. Oh, dear. Yeah. He jumps because yeah. he thinks he saw a mermaid. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine Coverdale ever being depressed long enough to consider it. You know? yeah. No, That's yeah. fair. So That's he, not... like, easily distractible. No. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't think he's yeah. ever been sad personally, but that's that's just my theory. Yeah. <laughs> so who wants to who wants to kick it off? I think John should go because you're the co-host. Yeah. No, oh, all right. Um. So when when I was thinking about it, like I I don't know, I feel like it it was difficult for me to envision like what would to say like the musical landscape be like uh, without Deep Purple. Um. So I was thinking more in terms of like my own life and um when i discovered them so i'm just thinking that when i picked up that um uh uh deep uh, oh god what the hell was it with the guitar on it the family deepest, album the deep no the deepest purple the deepest purple cassette and i heard black knight i think was the first black knight of speed king whichever one was the first one on that when i first heard that i was like <clears throat> yeah this is this is some cool stuff and got me into all the other bands that we talk about um 90 of them i think on the show and i just think that if they had never existed would i have gotten into like all of this other would i have discovered all this great music i'm sure i would have discovered great music and still been into cool bands but uh just the road that being a deep purple fan takes you down is 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 so deep as we've seen on the <laughs> so deep um <laughs> as we've seen on this uh as we've seen on the show um, that, I mean, I don't know, I, I probably would have never discovered like the, the butterfly ball or, um, you know, even like, uh, later on gotten into, uh, gotten into rainbow, um, you know, in the, the, the eighties rainbow or, uh, you know, Dio elf, like, uh, any version of white snake, um, you know, consider them past the, you know, before the 87 album, like the list but, goes on, but those things wouldn't even exist. Right. Like, no, I mean, no white snake, there would be no butterfly ball. Well, I mean, for the purposes of this conversation in my life but all right but let's say i never picked up that album and there was no deep purple on earth then oh, yeah okay. oh you're just assuming yeah you you'd never picked up that album but but deep purple actually did exist right gotcha. right but i mean if you want to go down that road then yeah i probably still would have been a fan of rock but i mean mm -hmm. um I, I don't know if i would have um i don't know if my musical taste would have been as diverse um and then not to mention all the you know everybody here uh, that I've met as a result and all of the different, uh, you know, doors and friendships that it's opened up years and years later, which, you know, I think is um, probably the most uh, rewarding. So. All right. Well, we've got, um, we've got one. I'm trying to see where our uh, listener ones are. Here we go. The first one, I think this is the first one that came in. <clears throat> And this is from this is called How Deep Purple Changed My Life by Cough Blackmore Tights, aged 41 and three quarters. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Uh, Deep Purple were at the start of my musical journey. Without them, literally everything would have been different. In 1997, I was a massive pop music fan. I listened to the UK Top 40 every weekend, taping songs I liked on my Casio tape recorder. The last single I bought was Ace of Bass, The Sign. If you don't know them, think 90s ABBA tribute band. <laughs> Uh, then one day walking home from school, my best friend, Sean, said, do you fancy learning guitar? If you want, I suppose, I replied. That night, we started learning how to play. A few weeks later, we found Sean's dad's copy of 24 Karat Purple. We now considered ourselves guitar gods as we knew both the G and the C chords. <laughs> we innocently put the Deep Purple CD on and our world changed. This was so much more than just G and C. I bought my first Purple CDs on my 16th birthday in 1998. They were the double CD anthology and live at Nebworth uh, 84. I played them to death, and <clears throat> with the help of anthology and later the internet, I discovered all about the different, uh, different lineups and albums. Uh, I became obsessed, mainly with Richie Blackmore and trying to learn the guitar parts. I failed. Sean, however, was a much better, and when the idea of forming a band with some other friends came up, I switched to bass. If I can't be Richie, why not try and be Roger? I even grew my hair and occasionally wear a hat. Not quite reached bandana stage yet. Um, we lived and breathed music from that point on. Purple to Zeppelin and Sabbath, Metallica to Nick Cave, Roxy Music, Bob Dylan and on. But the obsession all starts and ends with Purple. They are my most listened to band. They made me learn an instrument and form a band. My band has just celebrated its 21st uh, year together. Wow. With only one lineup change. Well, that would never <laughs> make it in the Deep Purple universe. My best friend Sean left in 2005 to become an adult. Boo. Boo him. Uh, we have done hundreds, if not thousands, of gigs over the years. And one of them, I met my future wife, who just happened to have a little thing for long-haired bass players. Oh, my God. That's, that never happened to me when I was a long-haired bass player. <laughs> a jackpot, because she is way hotter than my personality on its own deserves. And as long as she's blinded by my flowing hair and I play bass every so often, I'll be okay. I didn't uh, get to see Purple until 2002 on John Lord's last tour, a week before my rehearsal with my then new band. It is still one of the best gigs I've ever seen, and that started my love for gigs. Now I travel far and wide and see as many gigs as I can each year. Again, all starting from that first Deep Purple gig. Without Purple, I would probably be a successful but probably single businessman as I quit my business study studies at college to become a full-time rock star in my head but weirdly even after these years i still don't own a copy of 24 karat purple the cd that changed my life signed blackmore tights p.s keep up the good work right. that's beautiful well, very very nicely done and yeah, uh just just, nice. just for the record <laughs> blackmore tights <laughs> was he saying boo or boo earns <laughs> yeah. I was saying Boo Earns. <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting when I interviewed, um, oh, now I, I can't think of his name, uh, the Peter Golby from Uriah Heap. He said the reason he left the business was because he didn't feel very, very Jimmy Stewart, it didn't feel like what he was doing was making a difference. He didn't feel that people cared. And when I hear stories like this and I think of, of the bands, they don't get to know this stuff. They don't, they see the album sales, right? Or they see the streams or whatever, but they don't get to know these stories unless you happen to find a way to meet them and get the chance to tell them. Yep. Yeah, totally. I, the, uh, as you guys know, a few, um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I put up uh, one of my, my band had an old EP and I put it up and then I, I started, people started, um, you know, from it's it was from 2002, so it's 21 years old, and people started messaging me and being like, "Oh my god, I used to listen to that all the time 20 years ago," and I was just like, "Really? <laughs> I didn't know about it then." It took 20 years to even have anybody mention it, you know. And of course, yeah. this is before, not before the internet, but we we had like a little crummy website, but there was no social media, there was none of that. So you know, I knew like a few people. You know, we had we had pretty good turnout at our shows for a band playing mostly originals. Um, but it was cool to hear that the, some some people were like excited to actually listen to that. It might only be you know a handful of people, five ten people that are excited to see that on Spotify or whatever. But yeah, it's interesting that you don't you know. And when you think about it at this scale, you know somebody like Peter Golby or uh, even bigger, that how many people they touch and have absolutely no idea that they are making a difference, even if you know 
you, no matter how many people that they're they're reaching, there's going to be people that are upset that they're quitting or or that not putting out music or whatever it is. And he even said, you know, if if social media had been around in the '80s when he was in Uriah Heep, it would have been a completely different story because at least he would have seen, you know, some support. But I, and I think like you're looking out in front of twelve thousand, fifteen thousand people screaming that you're playing easy living or what? Like, how do you not? But I think he felt more his personal contribution as opposed to the band. Um, but yeah, that's that's one thing that that at least in this age, we do have the ability to sometimes get messages to people, which is pretty cool. Yeah, but if, if he had social media, it would have been like, ah, oh, I like the old lineup. This is this is my Uriah Heap. I mean, it's probably way better off that he didn't have that. You just had the people at the, yeah. you know, you might have had a few hecklers at a show or something, but it wasn't like something that could chase you 24 hours a day. Very true. That'd be horrible. It made him quit sooner. Yeah, exactly. To follow up on uh, what you just said, Nate, about your music, um, I've been trying to find somebody that would um, that will do a uh, episode of uh, reviewing that, and I'm purposely not listening to it because I want to hear it fresh for the first time. <laughs> so, if there are any takers on that, Haskin already made it very clear to me. <laughs> earlier today that he has no interest and no time <laughs> and he basically threatened my life if i even suggested doing another podcast with him at any point so Is anyone else I who said? might be interested ah, i came across that way it was a little harsh yeah. you know made me feel bad <laughs> oh, wow um, i'm gonna rip a pot for this 20 year old four song ep <laughs> if, it, if it was no, i don't think it had anything to do with your ep i think it was just that he's a busy dude and Said so your thing wasn't important. Been done to make I mean, he'd love to rip it apart. It. <laughs> wow, that all sounds like me. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd love to see where where it showed up in the rating spreadsheet, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody else is gonna have to rate it. I'm... It's better than Warhorse, and I, I was just gonna ask how do you, how do you spell Warhorse? <laughs> um, yeah, I will. So... I will sit pretty confident that no matter what you feel, about, it might not be your style or whatever, but it'll probably outrank Warhorse. So well, I. I... Yeah. I just wanted to bring up because uh, this was a point I wanted to make too. It's like if Deep Purple didn't exist, you, we're going to talk about mostly positive things, but um, there's a positive with a negative, and that is probably Warhorse never would have got me. <laughs> <laughs> Or the Glenn Hughes Christmas album. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. I'm yeah, sure we could come up with a bunch more. Uh, There's probably a few <laughs> positives, yeah. That <laughs> reminds me, you guys, when you did the Christmas episode last year and you did the gift exchange and, and you know, you were supposed to subtly play these at your Christmas parties, did we ever get the results of what happened? No, I don't think we did. <laughs> I think we texted about it, but did what? Well, yeah, just, just I mean, this is kind of reporting back late, but did did a did anybody actually do it? No, no. <laughs> John did. I knew John wouldn't. <laughs> well, because you got Blackmore's night, right? Yeah, yeah. right. I think I, I had mine well, in my mix. I don't but think it was, anybody even. Noticed. I was going to say mine was already mm. in my mix anyway, and it's always there, so people mm. heard it and didn't react. It was a better yeah, idea that... in theory than actual practice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's one of those ones you had to like, it has to be like um, a punishment, like something yeah. really bad. <laughs> and then you have to video it happening. That would give it, a, you know. Yeah. Or we could just yeah. be like, you have to play the entire Glenn Hughes Christmas album from start to finish, <laughs> no breaks, and, 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 and just keep shushing people. Shh, shh, shh. Yeah. You need to hear this. <laughs> so I did I stop see. crackling? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. All right, good. Yeah. All right. I stepped on the cat's head. Um, <laughs> so I, what I was going to say is if you're of a certain age, when I'm on these Zoom calls and I'm looking at it today, but especially because Haskins down the bottom, all I can think of is one of these things are not like the other. One of these things just don't belong. <laughs> well, it's just that we're all New England guys and you're not, you know, that's all. But anyway. I, I'm from <laughs> Detroit, if that helps. Oh yeah, it's no. Detroit, Detroit, New England. I remember that. It's cold. Um, it's closer to New England. It's I mean, cold they made cars. Close yeah. enough. Yeah, they made cars, and you could drive one up to New England. I get it. Yeah, I see the, I see the connection. Uh, closer than Vegas. I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you picked out me instead of the picture of Nate's shoes that we have uh, as, as being not like the others. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, but he is. He's like Nate because they both say Nate. Yeah, that's that's my uh, my alternate host um, account that doesn't ever make a video appearance. It's just my shoes, my so, custom Reeboks from years ago. Thanks, Rich. To stay I, I appreciate fed, the plugs. <laughs> <laughs> trying to uh, trying to stay somewhat on course here. 
it's really hard for me, as you guys know. I mean, I've been on enough and talked to you guys enough to know that my life would have been drastically different um, had Deep Purple not been a part of it. I mean, I was a huge Beatles fan, a huge music fan, um, but it was going to see Deep Purple uh, for my first concert that just kind of changed everything for me. I immediately fell in love with the band and became obsessed with them and much like you guys then started following all, you know, all the rabbit holes down and all my friends who were into different music than me were happy. I was finally coming to the rock side and the metal side. And they were more than happy to, you know, lend me born again and go like, Hey, that's Ian Gillen. And, you know, I still remember a conversation with my brother when uh, I was really into Jesus Christ superstar before I was into deep purple. And my brother saying, um, Hey, you know who that is? Don't you? I'm like, no, who he's like, well, that's the guy that sings smoke on the water. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, sure it is. Because um, my brother did have a tendency to do things like that to me. But um, yeah, and so right from there, my life would have been different. I mean, I have no idea musically where my taste would have taken me without Deep Purple because so much of what I listened to came out of that, you know, and even in, you know, the offshoots and offshoots and then bands that kind of sounded like them and, oh, that guy played guitar in that band. So now I went and listened to them and, you know, much like, much like your show. And that's probably why I enjoy it so much is that you guys go down a lot of those same rabbit holes I did. And you've, you've done some stuff that, yeah, I might've listened to once in the eighties and just never got that into, but hearing it again, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, it still sucks, but I'm glad I heard it, <laughs> yeah. you know, but I'm glad I heard it. Um, but then carrying on from there, I mean, I, I've, you know, Deep Purple always played that part. I was always excited to hear what was going on. Even when JLT joined the band, I was probably more accepting of it than most people. Like it was because I liked him in Rainbow. I'm like, hey, hey, whatever, as long as Deep Purple's still going. And then, I mean, as you guys all know, as the internet started kind of becoming a thing, uh, my wife came home and was telling me about it and describing it. And of course, if you don't know what the internet is, like it sounds really good, like a good thing. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah, you can look up anything. And I'm like, well, look up the Beatles. She's a big Beatles fan. She came back. She's like, yeah, pick something else. There was a lot, a lot of stuff on the Beatles. <laughs> <Too much stuff. laughs> and so I'm like, oh, just, you know what? I don't know what's going on with Deep Purple because I haven't seen a Kerrang! magazine in 10 years. So I have no <laughs> idea what's going on with Deep Purple. And she's like, all right. And she found like the, the they were just about to release Perpendicular. And so she found the website and it had the little sound samples and all kinds of stuff about mm. it. And I was like, wow. And so she printed off some of the pages and I got like real into it. And that actually sparked me to go out and get my very first computer. Um, I think it was like a four meg compact that cost me about two grand and dial up internet <laughs> and everything, um, oh. you know, waiting, waiting for everything to go, doo, 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 doo. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Torture. download, but I was, um, and from there, I, you know, I, I, I went to see them on that tour. I actually left a wedding early to go see that show with Steve Morse okay. and um, just happened to bump into a, a, you know, a guy that I had made friends with over the Internet uh, that was with the band. And I invited him out for a beer and he said, I got a better idea. And he took me backstage. Um, and it was the first time I got to meet the band and including John Lord. It's the only time I got to meet John Lord and talk to him. Mm -hmm. Um but I mean, and from there, obviously, you know, talk about an unbelievable moment for a fan, you know, big a fan as I was and um, just started, you know, I stayed in touch with all those people. And every time Purple came anywhere around, they were able to finagle away for me to get backstage and then made a, you know, made my friendship with Roger um, through all those times being back there and um, stayed in touch with them all these years. And I mean, you guys know all this, a lot of the stories and obviously then you guys got to meet them through me and. Mm -hmm. Um, so just the, the amount of happiness that band's brought into my life, my wife and I have traveled across the country just to go to the concerts. Um, a child or two might've been conceived on those trips. So <laughs> my wife's in the background shaking her head. Like you really didn't need to say that. Um, <laughs> uh, you really did. <laughs> I did. I did. Hey um, <laughs> that's why my daughter's middle name is machine head. Um, <laughs> how, how long did it take her to print out those pages on a dot matrix color printer right I, 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 no no she actually worked for a uh uh company that ebsco publishing on their nascent years and they uh that was their special it was all that kind of online information so they had all the top end high end stuff so it was it was pretty cool um but yeah so i mean the and I've met all my, yeah, I've met Dio because of them. I met some of the guys at Skinnerd of, you know, 
all these other bands that I idolized growing up or, or loved. And I got to talk to these people on a one-on-one -on -one basis as a human being, not as a, just a fan, because if they see you standing there with Roger Glover and he's introducing you, they, they take you a whole lot more seriously than you just standing there with a backstage pass waiting to, you know, talk to them. Um, so it's just been an incredible journey, you know, hanging out with him, going to his apartment, having him paint a painting for me. I mean, come on, mm. like, how could you ask for more? But beyond that, and I know we've talked about this a bunch of times. Look at this. Look at the screen right here. There's, you know, all these people on the screen I would not know. I would not be friends with. We would have our, our paths never would have probably crossed or we might have been at a concert together and not knowing it like John and I have done several times. Um, but <laughs> but now, you know, we have these friendships and quite frankly, I consider them very good friendships. I enjoy it. I enjoy our text groups. I enjoy, you know, the jokes that we send back and forth. And we would not I wouldn't definitely wouldn't have it without purple. And obviously you guys wouldn't either. Um, so they, mm -hmm. they, I mean, I trying to imagine my life without them is it's almost unthinkable. And then taking the other path that John said, if they didn't exist musically again, how do you, how can you even comprehend that? I mean, <clears throat> music would have continued obviously, and they would have had their path, but I, I think without deep purple, you lose that whole um, combination of um, classical uh, meets blues meets hard rock mm -hmm. that spawned so many artists. Think of all the artists that say like, Oh, deep purples, iron Maiden, Metallica, um, it, pretty much anyone from that era mm -hmm. points back to deep purple or Richie Blackmore as, 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 or John Lord. Um, so without the Aerosmith, I know Aerosmith said that without machine head, their first album wouldn't have been what their first album was. So, that just that's like what's that called the butterfly effect i mean if you stepped on a, a hammond organ in mm -hmm. 1968 you know <laughs> and the, you know the, the, here we, there you go who knows what we would have ended up with i mean again we would have had some type of music but what, what would it have been mm -hmm. you know what how different would it be on a bright side we probably would not have an ingvay malmstein <laughs> but the pick guy but, but he wasn't job. but he wasn't influenced <laughs> by richie remember no, no, not, not at all no, no, it depends pa on the only day, paganini yeah. that's yeah. it right, right. right. So as long as as long as paganini existed we'd still get ingvay <laughs> that's right but here's you wouldn't have known who paganini was without richard blackmore <laughs> that's right he would have been playing a gibson i did I, yeah, so, a, a, a comment on the on the ingvay uh pick guy video uh, just today or yesterday <laughs> and said um, it lives it's like, it's like our most watched video <laughs> and somebody said i went to go see him um i only went to see him once 30 years ago and he's like and he, he had a pick reload guy even then wow <laughs> so think of wow. all the jobs he created over the years would would those people have been unemployed destitute without without deep purple having existed at, at my gig this weekend, I decided that I was going to play a little guitar over the shoulder of the guitar player. And he has one of those pick things on his mic stand. Um, and there was only one pick in it. And I just, I was laughing while I pulled it out. I'm thinking to myself, well, somebody just lost their job. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, that, I mean, that's, I, I, I could go on all night about how many things have been touched in my life bonding with my kids going to the concerts taking to them some of their first concerts them getting to meet the band um you know the great picture i have of of when my daughter first daughter was born and you know roger i showed him a picture of being a proud dad and he's like oh what do you want me to do kiss the baby and i doubled down and i'm like yeah as a matter of fact that's exactly what i want you to do <laughs> and he did so i have a great picture of him holding up the picture and kissing the baby picture which then you know 17 years later 16 years later my daughter brought backstage and had him sign for her and then took a picture of her kissing him on the cheek the exact same way. Um, you know, just things like that, that I mean, how do you beat those memories and just all the good people I've met because I'm all the, all the road crew that I'm still friends with. Um, and, you know, and like I said, you know, I consider, you know, some of you guys, some of my best friends now we hang out and spend time together and I can directly draw that line right back to, to, to deep purple. So. I'm actually now I'm gonna get, my, now I'm gonna get all misty. Deep Purple Road Crew <laughs> yeah. shirt right now, the one that they did for um, during COVID so that they could raise funds to help those people. Which I don't know if they were the first band to do it. They were the first band I saw doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. But um, thank you. you. I rambled on far too long. No, that was a <laughs> yeah, great I, story. And I was going to say, in, Nate, unless you want to cut to uh, another uh, another patron, I think Rich also set me up uh, nicely to go next. 
go he for it. Me, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think Rich set me up and, and I think he knows he did because he invoked mm -hmm. the uh, the holy name of my all time favorite band. And, uh, you know, I, I come to, to Deep Purple a little differently than everybody else in the group. And this is my first time meeting Scott. So, you know, Scott, to put this in perspective, if you looked at my knowledge of all of the different bands throughout the Deep Purple family, Deep Purple is the one I come to close to last. Wow. You know, you know, like they like Jesus Christ Superstar, White Snake, you know, the 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 classic, you know, early White Snake. All of that stuff is is mentally in my wheelhouse before I ever even get to Deep Purple. And in fact, I know this is blasphemy. Uh, I have not seen Deep Purple yet. Um, yet, but but yeah, yet. But to uh, to Rich's point about the butterfly effect, this is one of those things where, it, and it's similar with Aerosmith. I think we have to call it the butterfly ball effect. Just the butterfly ball yes. effect. <laughs> you know, it's, it's similar to with, with Aerosmith, where I like Aerosmith, but I was never as into Aerosmith as I was into the bands that they influenced. And so while I love Deep Purple, I came to them by way of the bands they influenced. You know, so for example, my first copy of uh, Live in Japan is Dream Theater's two CD full cover of Live in Japan. I mean, Made in Japan. Um, yeah, so I heard I heard you know Dream Theater covering Deep Purple long before I actually heard the Deep Purple albums. And then to get to to uh, the band Rich mentioned, uh, if not for Gillen. Bruce Dickinson doesn't start singing. And you know, he he's been really clear about that. Uh I saw him do a uh, do a spoken word tour maybe February before last and he tells this story about being at boarding school and the first time he heard Machine Head playing behind somebody's door and he just walked in and was like who is this? And that was the point where he he said to himself, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So yeah, without Deep Purple no Iron Maiden. Um, half of the stuff in this room is not here. Um, and <laughs> and frankly, without Iron Maiden, probably by this point, I have you know killed someone and landed in jail because that's 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 the band that is my like absolute top. That's my Uriah Heap. You know, that's my my Deep Purple. That's the one that I know inside and out. And at some point, I will start reminding Nate and John that. Technically, every Iron Maiden album since 1990, where Yannick joins, is part of the Deep Purple family. But uh, well, even but, before with Martin Birch, yeah. right? So, there we go, Martin Birch. Everything he touches, almost everything. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, that's uh, I absolutely love love Deep Purple. Um, you know, but I but I came to it, I came to them after I loved Maiden, after I loved Dream Theater, after I loved Dio, after I loved White Snake. Uh, so it's been really. Uh, a fascinating journey now listening to to all of the deep purple catalog and figuring out oh that's where it came from now i get it it's it's um it's like reading a mystery in reverse you know or you've read you know the the ending but you don't know how it started uh so that's that's been really fun and uh, and i also would second yeah, you know, Rich's uh, point that it's it's just great to be here. It's great to be here with like-minded people who you know are into the same things. You know, whether it is, um, you know, whether it's Deep Purple, whether it's music, or you know, I had somebody who texted me uh, around eight fifteen on on Sunday, and they're like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm texting you so early." And I said, "No, no, it's okay. We've had a, a Simpsons conversation going on the other chat since seven forty five. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's. Uh, it's uh it is funny and uh now um now of course that i've actually gone to a concert with this group uh my daughter has decided she can no longer refer to you as internet friends so <laughs> but but yeah that's uh for me that's that's really it it's um i i love the width and breadth and depth of everything that has come out of deep purple and it's uh it's just amazing to really discover discover them now as as the last piece of the puzzle and hopefully not the last piece of the puzzle because i do need no still need to see them live so it's interesting that you mentioned um you know the the 
reading the mystery in reverse because it kind of ties into what we were talking about earlier with it's a wonderful life mm-hmm. which this was unintentional but even if you haven't seen the movie you, you get the references and you know the story and it's kind of the same thing with this which you you might not know the reach and everything that they had but um you, you start piecing the things together and kind of like john and i've talked about a million times and we we're like wait the guy in white snake was in deep purple what and you 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 piece all that stuff together after the fact it's kind mm-hmm. of interesting um all right, let's move on to Raf Calf. Um, Mr. Raf says, I often wondered how my life had changed if at that fateful day when I had to choose between uh, RBR and Aerosmith's Toys in the Attic, um, RBR meaning Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, I had chosen the latter. Probably just like Chris L. said, I would have gotten laid sooner. <laughs> I would probably have landed with the limp clutches of grunge in the early 90s. Mm. Shudder. Or listen to techno. I would definitely had different friends during my formative years. I was introduced to Purple by my best friend at the time who found his dad's records. In Rock just blew me away, even though I was listening to much harder stuff like Biohazard and Sepultura. I think we bonded over it. He showed me so much more cool stuff like Sabbath, Tull, Motorhead, pretty much all my favorite bands. So I really don't know who I would be today if I hadn't heard of Deep Purple. So that's... A good one. Oh. Very good. And I got another one too here. Well, I wish I get a few more. Um, this one comes to us from Arthur Smith. Getting support from the patron <laughs> Arthur Smith. Hi, Nate. Oh, what a question. I found it hard to visualize what my life would look like had Purple not existed or indeed what the music scene would be like. In terms of my life, I was already a big fan of the Beatles, the Who, Free, Bad Company, Tall, and Yes – among others, so that would have continued uh, as they existed before or separately to Purple. I think the biggest difference is that in 1985, I'd probably have gone to Live Aid instead of uh, Nebworth. Is it Nebworth or Nebworth? Nebworth. All right, I'll go with that. Nebworth for the Purple reunion. I knew I could only afford one trip to London for that summer, a big concert, and I remember thinking Nebworth would be more important to me at that point. I'd have had a much smaller record and CD collection, that's for sure. I took my then girlfriend and now wife to see both Rainbow and Whitesnake in 1980. She refused point blank to go again, and it took me until 1987 to persuade her to marry me. Maybe we'd have been married sooner. Obviously, I'd never have come across you guys, and thought that ma- and the thought of that makes me sad. You've reconnected me with the band as the Morse era didn't grab me, and I'd stopped listening. I'd enjoyed the first three Blackmore's Night albums, but I'd found subsequent releases repetitive and dull. Only Whitesnake's return in 2003 had kept me in the fold, so to speak. The music scene itself would be vastly different. Uh, The whole new wave of British heavy metal was launched off of these bands being fans of Purple, so I've got to assume bands like Iron Maiden and others such as Metallica just wouldn't be around or sound very different. Also, of course, Rainbow wouldn't have existed, and I think they are far more influential than commercially successful. Rising gave birth to a whole bunch of symphonic heavy bands dealing with swords and castles. As <laughs> ever, Richie moved on and was ahead of the curve on the melodic adult-oriented rock scene. They were about five years ahead of Bon Jovi and Def Leppard with the idea of big catchy choruses and songs that would appeal to the mainstream. Looking forward to hearing the episode. Thanks for the uh, keeping the show going. All the best, Arthur. Oh, hey, 1980 you, White Snake. That would have been uh, ready and willing. That would have that been would a have good been tour. A great show to see. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Great one. So, um, to take a little break here. Um, so this is like oh, like a total aside here, but I wanted to k- k- kind of think when 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 John had mentioned something about this being a crossover with uh, "It's a Wonderful Life." Um, I decided it was like, you know what, everyone, all the kids are talking about this AI stuff. So I'm going to see if I can generate some art that combines deep purple with it's a wonderful life. <laughs> oh, no. So I have a bunch of pictures here that I created that I'm just going to share with you real quick. Okay. Um, I'm not super worried about it's a one if about, a uh, AI anymore about it taking over the world. Cause right now in its current state, it's not very good, but yeah. I thought that these pictures would, would, uh, bring some holiday cheer to everyone so okay um as as pete would say you got alan iverson to do this <laughs> <laughs> so this i don't know what it oh, is wow. it's sort um, of like a roger glovery looking character on the right with the hat and then there's this 
I don't know what you'd even call them in the background there. It's definitely like of of the era of It's a Wonderful Life, but I don't know. I don't know where That'd they're going. The TMC colorized. It's a yeah, wonderful life. TMC, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that Dudley Moore? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it could be Dudley Moore. Um, yeah. So this this one's great. Look at this. <laughs> Eight, eight elderly oh, rockers standing in front of a Christmas tree. None of them. They all look kind of like they look, look like they could be brothers. That looks like that's that looks like the Glenn Hughes album cover <laughs> mor morphed with it's a wonderful. Yeah, I, I don't I'm not gonna know lie. Supposed to be who here? I'm not gonna lie. If you put if you had added like Uriah Heap Christmas album on that, I know so little about them. I've been like, oh, yeah. really? Uh, fair. fair. <laughs> And I mean, and two of them great. are wearing. Yeah, two of them are wearing purple, so it's getting closer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the guy in the the guy in the chair only has one leg, and then the guy behind him. <laughs> Don't you judge. The guy behind him is like really short, or because he's like standing up, but his his legs seem to be gone. I don't know what's going on. Maybe All that's right. Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> it's the guy in the Aussie Maybe. tour. And uh, and. Just as, uh, you know, something that gets overlooked with AI is AI has still not figured out hands and fingers. Like, look at these horror <laughs> shows. <laughs> yeah. oh Mangled hands, hands with seven fingers. And Oof. Just Yikes. Absolute disaster. Did you guys see the the picture I posted of the, the uh, supposed new product of stuffing your grandma and putting them in your uh, living room table? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the hands and the faces on that were just like this. I just absolutely, at least this one's doing a reasonable job with faces. <laughs> they don't look like anybody related to the band, but the faces look almost decent. Yeah, they're just like, the AI was like, ah, old rock and roll group, we can do that. <laughs> yeah. So here's one that's like kind of a... <laughs> It's like does he have three legs? <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Is that like he borrowed? He borrowed the leg from that other guy. Yeah, <laughs> and then they so dressed him like, up like, like Prince, and then yeah, he's wearing yes. like what Prince would wear. He sort of looks like a cross between Brian May and Richie Blackmore, and that yeah. guitar. I don't know what to make of it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not right. What Although, What does that have to do with? It's a wonderful life in Christmas. Look, look at the guitar, at, too. Uh, the guitar neck is all screwed up. Look, look, look <laughs> at the drums in the background. It's like a double mm. bass, but look how far the double bass <laughs> drums are. From each other. Like they've already started breaking it down. <laughs> That's yeah, perfect. Maybe. If you're a drummer that has rickets, that really works. <laughs> Wait, actually, we don't know. Is this Paganini? I mean, this... the, the drummer yeah, has this three is... legs, too. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or, or more. Um, this this one, I don't even know what to make of. <laughs> it's just an old guy with a present. It's the other it's side the of the Glenn Hughes That's... album. All right, it's that the, looks the like the live it's... action version of Fat Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I it looks like it's... it's trying to be like a uh, maybe Gillen. Yeah, I think mm. it's Ian Gillen when he has his had his lesbian haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got kind of a weird sort of mullet and then he's all these fingers over here like just talk about sausage fingers now that's sausage fingers right there so many piles fingers. and piles of fingers all intertwined my goodness he's just got this one votive candle lit on the table <laughs> this one it just what? looks like it's a it's a movie poster i don't know it looks like uh it reminds me of like gone with the wind or something yeah it sort of looks, sort like, of looks like yeah donna reed and mm -hmm. uh yeah. Uh, just, I, yeah, I don't know if her neck looks wrong or if it's just that shadow, but that just—it looks like her head was placed on separately. Yeah, it's quite possible. It probably yeah. was. Hey, <laughs> it's Roger with Rich's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is like this must be like you know uh, every time a, a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. It's like it's but it's that same guy. It's that same like almost yeah. Gillen-esque guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never seen a picture of someone holding a child that looks like they hate children more. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, whose is this? Give it back. And, and once again, a hand growing out of a hand. Yeah. This is oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you point that out, it's grotesque. Yeah, yeah sorry. Pay attention, you miss it, but the hands are really bad. Her oh. three fingers are all the same length. <laughs> so this one it's a... is uh it, it, it's it also uh, AI does not what? figure out how to do uh words, so it's oh. it's it's a RR wonderful Liffy. <laughs> look at this look, look at, at this lady. Woman, look at the woman in the middle. 
Oh my God. She... <laughs> What is that like? Is that like Sloth's mother from the Goonies? Oh my like... God. <laughs> All right, so let's add eyes to the things they don't get right. <laughs> yeah, oh, my just... God, this is terrible. They don't yeah. even have people. They're just barcodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what's this up here? Raw Isaiolifi? <laughs> well, not yeah, to mention I mean, the guy in the back with, with the, the purple hat looks like a Batman villain. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, is, this is amazing. This is... This, is, this should have been for the Halloween episode. Yeah, I know. Right? Look, at, look, at, no, look at the hand on oh, this one. Going into the kiss. Fingers. Um, but yeah, this is just like them in a bar or something. I don't know what's going on. But but some of these people are like repeated. Like it's that's the same guy from earlier yeah. on. The, so the Nate, almost Roger you, Glover character. What did yeah. you feed the the AI? Like... I just told it um nightmares. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I oh my god it, i told it deep purple in a wonderful i think i used a couple of different props but it's all basically like deep purple in a it in it's a wonderful life okay um hmm. or oh you know what some of them it might have just been deep purple christmas okay um, oh okay but here's just two guys like in a bedroom <laughs> that guy's got like a guitar looks like he could almost be richie all right <laughs> all right the the hands aren't Oh wait! One, I spoke two, too soon. Count, four, count. Five. No, he's got five fingers and a thumb. <laughs> uh, well, he must be great on that guitar with the, the yeah, extra finger. Yeah. Yeah. As good as Ingve. Yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that the Imagination Movers Christmas? Oh, that looks like it could be Blackmore's oh, Night. Yeah. Oh, but so yeah, there's one guy that's uh, got a, a a Santa hat on near the tree with a really distorted Strat. <laughs> But look at that guy, like two, like, like two over from him. He's just like, <laughs> like, and the guy, the, the guy in the middle back there, like, he looks like out of place. Like he's the younger guy in the band. That took yeah, over he's the new side. guy that replaced like somebody. <laughs> One of the Drummer legacy that members. Died or whatever. I but wonder like, if the Christmas tree and everything is good, but the people are a mess. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, I wonder if the guy that was with Jimmy Stewart was supposed to be Bernie Marsden, but if you you didn't put in White Snake, right? You just put in Deep no. Purple. Just Deep Purple. Yeah. I love this mm. this guy on the left, all the way on the left, he looks like a sailor. And <laughs> way too many frets on that guitar, too. So many frets. Oh, what's going on with the hair of the guy in the upper right there? It looks like he's got a coonskin hat, but it's his own hair. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's like, yeah, like a, a beret. Or I thought it was a, I thought it was a pirate scarf. There's oh. a lot of like um there's an account that I used to follow on Twitter called like this person does not exist and it would just continually put on like um it it would put on uh it would just try to create faces of people that didn't exist and usually they were they looked like they could just be regular people but sometimes they would get messed up and it would be like half a hat and half a head all sort of blended together and they, they, and that's I think what's happening with that guy in the back there Hmm. Um, that's this one amazing <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> like my. richie if he had a much harder life <laughs> oh oh i'll, I'll put this wonderful uh this wonderful gallery in the in the show notes for everyone to enjoy wow yeah I think that's it's richie if he got some uh plastic surgery so this one i, I don't know who the hell that's supposed to be but it's, it looks legitimate like it could be a person you He's know what santa nate going going <laughs> off of the mouth and that little indent under the nose i'm gonna say that's ian it could be ian ish mm -hmm. yeah. it's ish very ish a lot more yes. ish than ian jeez if this episode gets kicked oh, off, oh, YouTube, oh, 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 he's getting a little handsy here. <laughs> hey, oh, the, and look at her arm; like her hand is just coming out of nowhere. He's kind of <laughs> oh. he, he, so he's got one hand on her chest and one hand on her crotch. Like this is not. I'm not sure not this is wholesome. a wonderful life for anyone. This is, uh, this is <laughs> supposed to be Coverdale, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> banging this lady in the town square <laughs> she's got this, wonderful she's got this random hand coming oh. out of his arm like growing out of his arm how much how much more of this grotesque imagery do we have to sit through all of it just a few just a few this more. is great i love okay. it <laughs> this one is, it's, it's the ian gillen guy with actual wings what the fuck is that the same He's kid holding a baby <laughs> This is gonna be the uh, this is gonna be the cover uh, for the remaster of Born Again. Yeah. <laughs> it's looks way she's okay. scarier. I think uh, that's the same kid. It could be. That's it, it definitely the like same it. guy. That the AI is the same, not real kid. Yeah, right. What one wing though? <laughs> yes. 
No, the other yeah, one's yeah, behind this... the, the kid. Yeah, the other wings. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly, though, like the Christmas oh, I thought tree the looks kid good. The, I the present okay. looks good. The Christmas tree looks yeah. good. The fireplace, mm -hmm. like, oh, that's pretty good. It just mm -hmm. can't do people. Yeah. People. I don't know what his what's going on with his hand, too. It looks <laughs> like just like a big hunk of meat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gross. So I, I spent the uh, last, <laughs> last couple of weeks with a couple of days doing quite a bit with AI. <laughs> Yeah. Be, oh, yeah. Afraid, be afraid. Be very <laughs> afraid. Because the good stuff knows what it's doing. Mm. Yeah, right. Although exactly. it still can't it still can't spell. It was getting better on other yeah. stuff, but the spelling is where it loses it. I, so I, I think the, I think the days, challenge for next too. oh sorry. Oh, go ahead, Steve. No, no I was gonna say the, the challenge for next Christmas is to get the good stuff and combine it's a wonderful life with early white snake <laughs> album covers. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Yes. That's what I, I'm talking about. I was going to say uh, the other day I got AI to uh, hallucinate that chocolate covered marbles were a thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, there are things that are incredibly intelligent, but we're, we're not quite to Skynet yet. No, not, mm, not yet. I got bad news for everybody. Yes, we, yeah. yes, we, we aren't, but there are absolutely people. <laughs> but they are. are. Yeah, we don't <laughs> have are. access yeah. to it. Yeah. You know, who, you know yeah. who's like Skynet? Skynet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, at least we know what a, to do. Um, how about uh, feeding um, straight between the eyes in an early white snake album together? I'm pretty sure I know what you get straight between the <laughs> hey -oh. eyes. Hey -oh. That's the That's crossover an title right there. <laughs> this so, one is a giant gaping hole right here where you can see the Christmas trees. The so, so, speaking so, of so which. What's, yes. hey. so, so what's really weird about this one is every person with maybe the exception of the woman Looks like Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the eyes. They all got that like uh, droopy eye. They uh. all do. Yeah. The woman looks like normal. The, and this guy is sort of normal. Normal ish. Yeah. yeah. It's all a the rest of them stroke. are a mess. And it says, it's a wonderfuliffy. And there's like a little line over the edge. When the core sleeve. That's how I, I think that's I think that was all, all right. of them. Wow. I would just like to go on record as apologizing to the people who never ever uh. go and look at the pictures and just had to sit through that, <laughs> us <laughs> laughing at random things and <laughs> trying right. to picture them. Hopefully no one will ever be as entertained by us as us. Yeah. Well, hey, if, <laughs> true, true. If you go to the show notes in your podcast, there's a link right there. You can you just tap it and go right into the right into the website and you can you can watch along for your viewers. But you pleasure. have been warned. As yes, I learned that out. about it. Yeah. I was taught it that about episode 212. <laughs> As David Coverdale would say, just tap that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, that was something I had not intended wow. to share, but since it was so awful, I figured it would be uh, worth a look. Oh, that was great. That was, that was, uh, that was amazing. <laughs> All right, the wonderful Adrian Hernandez writes in, uh, Hey, Nate, if Deep Purple never existed, I never would have seen them in 1987 when I was only eight years old with my much older brothers. My first concert ever. Imagine that, eight years old. Wow. I want to see wow. Deep Purple. That's pretty awesome. Uh, if Deep Purple never existed, I wouldn't have Richie Blackmore as my main guitar influence starting at nine years of age. I also learned about classical music going to Catholic school, and his sound spoke to me even at a young age. I always identified with him in many ways because I was always very introverted in all my life, but was able to express my feelings by playing guitar or through my artwork, i.e. Perfect Strangers artwork I sent you, Nate, which is behind me there. I don't, can you see them though? I can't see my video. It's right, right up there, right above Pete's, all my greatest art pieces, Pete's rainbow shirt, Adrian Hernandez, uh, Perfect Strangers, uh, blacklight art, all my, all my greatest art pieces. Nice. Um, uh, so I find so much comfort in playing my deep purple songs of guitar along with my playing my favorite song, which is actually a rainbow song, Street of Dreams. Hmm. If deep purple Great never song. existed, I wouldn't be influenced to sing the way Ian Gillen sings. Coming from a musical family, I taught myself to play guitar and sing. He inspired me to challenge myself vocally, and I'm so glad he did with his performances of all the classic deep purple albums along with Perfect Strangers and everything leading to whoosh. I never would have been introduced to his solo albums from the early 80s. Accidentally on purpose taught me that it's perfectly fine to venture out into different styles of music. Without Ian Gillen, I wouldn't be able to sing with the power and range I can sing now. These two greats inspired so many around the planet, and I am glad you are allowing us to express our gratitude for the contributions to not just rock music, but music for the world to enjoy and communicate to each other. 
Merry Christmas to you, John the Gardo, and the listeners of your awesome podcast, Adrian Hernandez. Nice. Very nice. All right. So does anybody else uh, have any? I've got a few. Yeah, I have I, I have something. Yeah. If I can share my screen, Nate. Oh, that's right. Um, let me give you uh I forgot this is just like uh I'm gonna I'm gonna I do I have to make you a co-host? Let's see, I'll make you a co-host to see if that works. Host disabled participating screen sharing, it says. Okay. Yeah, I didn't do any I didn't do Jack. <laughs> Host disabled. Yeah, you should uh Peter, you should make sure you take a screenshot of yourself. That would be an awesome Christmas card. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah. There were a couple times you sat still and I'm like, did he just put up a picture? <laughs> I I think his uh his outfit kind of looks like that AI generated. <laughs> <some of that. laughs> Count AI his fingers. Maybe Peter that's... Gardo. <laughs> yeah. Gardo has been all AI right. all along. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Is it this one I want? Or is it this does it have does it have yes. audio? Yes, it does have audio. Ooh. And, all right. All right. So let's see. Make sure that this is in the right way. Okay. All right. So now what I'm gonna do. This is like work, guys. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Can you guys see this? Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very official. <laughs> US export classification. <laughs> Very nice. Oh god. <laughs> Look at this. It got the wreaths. It's got the deep purple. Wow, that's great. I Very actually nice. thought that I actually thought that was like the white sneak emblem at first when it was smaller. <laughs> so, so one of one of my last tasks uh if if I was still working, Pete would have had to send me this, and then I'd have to review it and tell him to put that marking on the bottom. Right. I, I I checked with uh, international trade compliance. Uh, so this is this is uh, this is not uh, part of the munitions issue with the uh, State Department or Department of Commerce. Ah, so could you could you hear what what it said when uh, no. I have it talk? No. Oh. You might have to share the uh with the little box check the box at the bottom to share the sound. Uh, let's see. Or sh share sound. Here we go. We'll go to high fidelity. So let's <laughs> let's fidelity. see if I can do Merry this. Merry Christmas everybody. No expense for the of life. I'm Peter Gardo. I'm a foundation level patron and Merry Christmas 2023. And then of course, when you're with folks at work, they would say, are there any questions on this slide? <laughs> <laughs> Done. Next slide, please. <laughs> How would your life be different if Deep Purple never existed? In this presentation, I'll describe the places I would not have been had Deep Purple <laughs> never existed. <laughs> First off, I wouldn't have been going to see Deep Purple down at the Mohegan Sun until I started listening to this dopey podcast. <laughs> and, uh, went down there with uh, Roback and Heavy D, had an extra ticket, met John, the host of the, co-host of the, of the dopey podcast. <laughs> I like the Venmo at the top there. You get the yeah. Venmo logo. <laughs> you would never have heard of Venmo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Two and a half weeks later, I was at a pub, brewery in the big city. I bumped to this guy named David Keith. I said, do you know any Deep Purple? He says, yeah, I'm the drummer for Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. And Blackmore's... Blackmore's Night. He's... Nice. COVID head. <laughs> the COVID. <laughs> the COVID. Uh, Very Christmassy COVID uh, there. <laughs> dopey podcast sent us all down to Florida. Only four of us were there. The host, Rich, and I met Rich and Nate for the first time. Sent a couple postcards, wore my suit on the plane. Never been to Hollywood. Hollywood, Florida. Oh, 
Jeez. I should that's, have dry run this a few times. <laughs> okay. That's when Pete was right. the pool the pool inspector. Remember? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. he's, good. He's, in, he's right by the pool in a full suit. <laughs> Blue Oyster Cult was there. Don't fear the Reaper. And don't fear the woman's <laughs> What is that? What is the um? It looks like, like uh, posts on something in in Russia. Oh yeah, so the guy in front of me. Oh, I've been looking at his phone the whole night, and I took a picture of his phone. If anyone knows Cyrillic, because okay, <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that's in Cyrillic, you know, it looks like it. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure that out. Or maybe it's Greek. I, I, it's hard to tell from this. Yeah. So deep purple. There's Nate out there on the left with his girlfriend dancing around during smoke and <laughs> water. But it gets but it gets better. So I just put that into auto translate. It said, um, you should just scream play speed king. <laughs> Roger in the juice. <laughs> <laughs> OJ OJ which is good buddies with with Roger Glover and uh he signed the coaster and it was a great time All right I, th I think we're going to need to put this um wound socket never been to wound socket before for the Baudry summer party so the New England chapter was there on Golden Girls Day and uh I think Hmm. It doesn't like the last few seconds of your audio. Doesn't like the last few seconds. I, I think I did in what I was I think I said there was I think I sent a postcard from there. So, yeah, you did that. My dad, I think, has that. Yeah, I sent postcard. it to your folks. Yeah. yeah. Next New Brunswick, New Jersey, the following February. And uh what a wonderful place. Never been there before, driven through it to go to Philadelphia or DC. Charles and Charles Charles and Charles was set in New Brunswick. <laughs> I did not okay. yeah, I did not know that. I didn't yeah. either. Yeah. Of all the episodes I saw, I never <laughs> it's all these far off pictures. And we went to see Deep Purple and we met uh, a whole bunch of folks from the Deep Purple community and uh never would have never done that. And there's a great photo of the belly cam with uh, <laughs> Nate, buying, Nate buying stuff from the edge. <laughs> Unsuccessfully shoplifting. Yes, yeah. South, South Kingston, Rhode Island. Spent a lot of time in Rhode Island the last six years for some reason. Didn't do a lot for the first 55 years of my life or 50 years of my life Stormbringer Joe Stump great show great cast of characters fake Ozzy there neat place to see a show <laughs> that, uh, that looks like uh, John talking to Ingve, then he's got a, yeah. a hand cart yeah yeah <laughs> He's, that's the pick guy loading up the picks. No, that was me talking to Joe. That was me talking to Joe Stump, and he had a he had like a like a hand truck. I think yeah. they were loading their gear. So yeah, so, yeah Sorry, this is the first time here. we've included a PowerPoint presentation in our show notes. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, down there is uh, James Taylor and uh, John talking to uh, what's his name again, John? We saw him at. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Um, I can't remember his name. We've done this already. The, yeah, the no, the singer, like <laughs> hell of ben? a nice guy. Oh yeah, super nice guy. Yeah, but I can't remember his name. On to Worcester, just three months ago. What happened to Worcester? Asked the failing New York Times in 2016. <laughs> and the same thing happened to every other <laughs> midside city in New England, and we were went to the Palladium, and I sent a postcard <laughs> from there. Yeah, that's all right. Glenn Hughes, great seats, great show. Went with our buddy Eddie, driven through Worcester a whole lot. Went to a hockey game there once. You know, to go to Maine or New Hampshire, you got to drive through Worcester. Met Steve Caldwell. Woo! <laughs> but if you want more, 
<laughs> more is more. <laughs> more is more. Hey, oh my gosh. <laughs> Couldn't have asked for anything more strange. <laughs> kept me going down this uh, uh, wormhole of Ingve stuff on the YouTube. What a character. What a character. <laughs> and here's he... his band. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> wow. That's that's great. That's very accurate. <laughs> yeah, we got Larry Fine, Steven Seagal. He's even better at karate. Yeah, right afterwards. We signed the beer coaster. Never been there before. Was there twice in one day. Oh wow. That's right, you All went right. there earlier, right? Yeah, and I yeah. think it's the last slide. <laughs> Conclusion, I've never seen this one before. Will this report meet your expectations? Please take the survey at deeppurplepodcast.com. <laughs> Roll back at 70s Weekly Countdown Podcast on the Twitter at 70s Weekly. Get that. All right. Wow. So, no, no QR code? <laughs> I don't know how to do a QR code. Yeah. We should have a survey. We should we should put a survey up on the website. See if this is a. I love when I do a, a mandatory training at work that you have to do, and then afterwards they like how how likely would you be to recommend this training <laughs> yeah. to a coworker? Mm, I'm like I don't think I have to. Like you get fired if you don't do it. <laughs> Wait, we we used to have this employee survey they gave at work, and they would pester you. I remember I had three bosses come by and pester me to take it. And then the survey comes out and they're like, we had 98% participation. Ooh, like, la la. Yeah, you, you yelled at me for three weeks to take it. Yep, this sounds very familiar. Uh, and then they never tell you the results because they're not what they wanted them to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have pestered them. Oh my God. Very cool. Well done, Peter. Well, yeah. 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 Yeah, I have to say the Gardo uh, so far wins for uh, presentation. Mm. Yeah, it definitely, definitely takes it in a, a different direction. And you know, Zoom used to be uh, the fun podcasting app until um, it was the COVID hit, as Peter said, and then <laughs> now it's like the not fun work app. <laughs> and mm, yeah, have to do the show with it too. So I, I still have in my desk drawer at work when he used to do presentations with the overhead. Head projector <laughs> and the uh and the uh, uh transparency slide the transparencies yeah oh and yeah yeah we, we've we've come a long way of uh from that but what, what's we? interesting <laughs> well <laughs> well that's where i was going okay yeah <laughs> because because now it's it's we're checklists to death and mm -hmm. have to take surveys but uh mm. no it was it, it was basically a travel log of of places that I've never would have been if it wasn't for this dopey podcast. <laughs> and uh, so thanks gentlemen. Well, thank Merry you. Christmas. Yeah. Oh, thank you, the Gardo. One thing I really like about the buildings back east is that almost every one of them looks like a place where you can get a hunting and fishing license, but you can also get like a good cinnamon roll. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. Most of them you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so Stephen Somerville writes in very, uh, very brief says in my life, uh, if my life hadn't existed around Deep Purple, I feel my number one band could have been either ELO or Queen, as they are just behind the pecking order of Deep Purple. So my rock music sense wouldn't change really, really? even without purple. Hmm. Um, then we've got, um, we've got this one, actually, this one comes to us. Do I have it here? Let's see. This one is from, I can find it here. I might have to come back to that one if I can't find it. Ah, crap. Did I lose one? I might have lost one. All right, we'll come back to this one. So we'll go uh, to uh, Runar Siemensen. Runar Siemensen sent in an audio. So let's uh, let's see what Runar has to say. I haven't listened yet. Hello, Runar Siemensen here. If you're into some excellent Scandinavian English, then this <laughs> is for you. <laughs> and as Nate and John always say, I'll try to keep this short. <laughs> a life without the purple. 
one word comes to my mind, and uh, that is empty. Mm. What this band and its offshoots has brought to the musical landscape is quite extraordinary. It's quite a legacy that I've been leaving behind with forming an entire genre and inspiring numerous bands and uh, musicians. It's hard to say what my life would have been like without the purple. I got into them when I was 10 years in 99 through my parents. And when my classmates were listening to Eminem, Backstreet Boys, Metallica and the likes, there I was listening to these old dinosaurs from decades ago. Oldie was a nickname I heard a lot, but phew, who cared? I remember a girl from a class when we were about 14 or 15 and she wanted to borrow my Discman. She was probably listening to a Britney Spears CD or something. And when she took out my Come Taste the Band record and looked at it and she had this look on her face as she was picking up this dirty rotten cloth from the sink. <laughs> you can uh, smell her face. <laughs> I will not have played the keyboards as I do today. When the other kids wanted to play guitar and drums, I wanted to play the Hammond organ like uh, Mr. John Lord. So I have to thank him for that. So as you can imagine, it's hard to picture a life without this wonderful band. We wouldn't even have this great podcast to crack us up every Monday. It's a great life. Otherwise, I would like to say thank you for making this podcast. It's the highlight of every single Monday and a great start to the week. So take care. Bye-bye. Double shot Monday. That's great. Yeah. Oh, that's a call. Back. Standing. I, I would. Uh, I would watch that. Yeah. I mean, I would listen to that if he had his own show. Yeah, absolutely. He's Thank got you. a good voice. He should be narrating like Harlequin romances or something. He does have a good. <laughs> and, and for the record, smell her face. Also, a lost White Snake album. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's have AI generate a cover for that. Yeah. <laughs> it'll just be. It'll just be Spinal Tap. Smell the world. Yeah. I love that like, she picked she picked out the CD like it was a dirty dish rag. <laughs> wow. That's great. Well, love um, the love for uh, Mark IV in that yeah, background little, music. Yeah. Good luck in the background. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I do have another audio uh on the one from Norman while I was uh, while that was playing. Uh, and this is our uh, our Hall of Fame member Norman Weichelbaum. I think it was 73 when my older brother came home with uh, Made in Japan, the first Deep Purple album we ever had, and he played it to me and I was simply blown away. I mean, this changed everything for me. I was 12 years old back then, and so I started to learn how to play guitar, pretended, well, I'm cool as Richie Blackmore, and I uh, founded my first band with some mates from school, but uh, they said, you're going to be the singer because you're a lousy guitar player. <laughs> so I thought, all oh, right, I'm going to be the next David Coverdale from Austria, you know, sexiest rock singer alive, darling. But uh, <laughs> chicks waiting backstage, it was only mom who said, OK, you're finished playing in front of 15 friends or so. So come and she drove me home. But anyway. <laughs> that coming on age with Deep Purple uh, somehow opened a door to creativity inside of me and led into my professional life in the end as a music and show producer. So I love to get back each Monday to those days uh, listening to the Deep Purple podcast and I hope you continue for a very, very long time. Go on guys and a Merry Christmas from Austria. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Very Norman. cool. That's great. Very nice. We get these folks that I've emailed with and talked to a bunch of times actually hearing them talk mm. is, is, is awesome. Um, Peter Illinois, uh, I'm sorry, Peter from Illinois, I don't think his last name's Illinois, writes in and says, Deep Purple was my bridge from prog to metal. I would have missed out on so much without them. As for my life, the music has motivated me to pursue my own goals with passion. Their work ethic and persistence and their work effort and creativity into old age have been a shining example for me. Never give up, never lose your muse. 
So oh. very, very well put. Mm. Um and then Mike Boyette writes in with another uh another one of the shorties. It says, uh, I was listening to Grand Funk quite a bit at age ten. I asked my brother for something heavier. He gave me machine head. So <laughs> simple and to the point and yes. uh See where he went from there. I never hear anyone say they gave me fireball, except for Lars, right? Lars. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I don't know. I love that album personally, but I—I I mean, it's—it's it's either in rock or Machine Head are the ones that. Um, hmm. Yeah, they have inspired people. Fireball fireball get all the love. Sandwiched yeah. between them and unduly. Uh, I mean, not that it's not recognized, but it just doesn't get as much love as the other two. I gave John Fireball, and I drank. Drink it. like yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know. That if sounds I'm like a disease. Uh... Actually, you gave. <laughs> That's <laughs> fireballs. Oh. Oh. I had to go to the <laughs> clinic to get it cleared up. Oh. Uh, Mark, did you want to go? Uh yeah, yeah. I, you know, Pete. Pete, this is like typical of uh, Pete and I's uh, work life together. He's the sophisticated one, and I was always the guy with the uh, stone knives and bear skin. So I'll just uh, <laughs> talk about it. I don't have a presentation. <laughs> but um, yeah, first of all, uh, as, as has been said, you know, we all wouldn't be sitting here enjoying this, uh, this good time on this uh, podcast. But um, also, you know, Pete and I do a podcast together that we say was a direct spinoff of this podcast. And without that, me being retired, yeah, Pete and I would text back and forth, but I don't think we would nearly spend as much time together um, as we are. So I think my retirement would be much, much different. And, um, you know, I don't think I'd go to many concerts at this point if it wasn't, uh, you know, if the friendship with uh, you guys and, and, and that, that's great. And uh, it, just in terms of the music, uh, I, yeah, you know, I knew of Deep Purple and was kind of a, just a fan of the stuff that you would have heard in the 70s. I had older siblings and stuff. And then I saw him in 86. It turns out Rich and I were at that same show that was up in Worcester. Um, and, and that was great. And just... Um, all the spinoffs and, and everything I've gotten into because of the, the podcast and um, my current musical obsession, which I've talked about a million times with uh, Rory Gallagher actually came out of deep purple. I had, uh, I was listening to Pandora's, the deep purple radio uh, station they had and Rory Gallagher came on, never heard of him. I'm like, who the hell is this? And then I went down a whole worm <laughs> wormhole of, his music and and realized how much he's kind of intertwined with Deep Purple and, and stuff and, and a lot of the bands. But I was also given some thought to the, what music would and wouldn't exist and how things would be different. And it's, I, you wonder about the spinoffs and, and all the other stuff. Like does, um, does Gillen do Jesus Christ Superstar? And if he doesn't do it and someone else is there, is that as big a deal as it was? And you look at, you know, Rainbow and, and you know, if, if Rainbow doesn't come about, does Dio's career just stay with what was Elf and that was it? And, and you, can, you can go on and on. And uh, yeah, so... You, you look at all that stuff and just the influence. And also when I think of a heavy band from the late sixties, early seventies, I think of a Hammond organ and I think of Richie Blackmore guitar. And that's like the, the sound that, that to me, everything else kind of, of, of heavy rock spawned out of that. Um, so, so I wonder how music would have been, been different without that. And then uh, finally, just sort of one thing I want, wanted to say, uh, I've talked a little bit about I lost my wife in 2017. And I, I tell this story that she told me when she was a teenager, uh, she, uh, she had some friends and this one guy, one guy had a car and they'd ride around in it and he had an eight track of uh, Deep Purple and he had 
lazy. And she said it was just this fun thing that they used to drive around and they just scream the chorus lazy out the window or whatever. And it's it's one of these things that I think about every time I hear that song. And it's it's just one of those memories of her that brings a smile to my face. It kind of I didn't know her as a teenager. And it's like I can picture her as a teenager back then. So so that's um yeah, that's what I wanted to say. So great, you know, love the podcast, love the friendship with you guys and and all of that I think would not have certainly not have taken place without without the band. So cool. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Really great sentiments. Yeah. yeah. Did, did they yell, shut up, shut up, shut up? <laughs> <laughs> you tell that story, Mark, for those that haven't heard that. Yeah, and it's funny because I actually talked to my uh, brother number two when I was out in Texas. and uh, So the story was bro brother number two had gone out and played basketball with a bunch of guys. This was in the 70s. And they got in the car. They were all sweaty and hyped up and, and listening to the radio and, and you know, you know yelling at each other calling each other names and all of a sudden the driver says shut up shut up shut up and so they all shut up like oh what's coming on the radio you know some some cool song it's great and that they heard precious and few are the moments. <laughs> <laughs> so that's oh, become man. that's that's become a thing on our podcast where it's like, you know, it's like shut up shut up shut up <laughs> so, oh, so it, the... you know that's kind of a corollary to that other song it, it wasn't lazy <laughs> that was playing it was something much more sappy <laughs> oh. That's definitely a sap. Yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> My goodness. Um, so I'm I'm really late in in thanking the second round of patrons. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it real quick. Um whenever we get off of a normal format, I always forget. Um so thanking our core level patrons coming in at the seven dollar seventy seven cent keep it warm rat tier. We have Michael Vader. At the six dollar ninety nine cent new nice price tier, we have Spike the Rock Cat and Sugar T. At the episode six dollar sixty six cent tier, we have Steve Coldwell. <laughs> <What's that last laughs> name? Nice name. As I'm looking for the next clip. Yeah, I think it's Arthur written Smith. at the bottom of my Zoom screen. <laughs> Claudwell. <laughs> oh no, Claudwell. <laughs> Anton Glaving and Charles Meadows at the $6.65 Almost Evil tier. Kenny Wymore, Michael Bagford, and Richie Sucksmith at the $5.99 Nice Price tier. We have Robert Smith, Peter from Illinois, and Carl Helberg. Actually, Peter from Illinois shouldn't be in there. He's upgraded. So sorry about that. Um, at the 60 Kroner Scandinavian Knights tier, we have Newt Morton Johansson. At the $5.55 What's Going On Here tier, we have Richard Fusey. And at the $5 Money Lender tier, John Convery, German Heindel, Adrian Hernandez, Jesper Alman, Alexi the Perfect Stranger, Slepikoff, Kev Roberts, Percival Frequency, Scott Zerns, Cynthia Doobie, Raph Kaff, and Coyote Bongwater. All right. So we do have... Um... Uh, another one here, which is Lord Longford writing in. Um, he says, Hi, Nate. It's Long Longford here. Here's a few counterfactuals. A word with a world without deep purple for you. Trapeze would have slowly grown until the late 70s when they had a big breakout hit. More mature Glenn Hughes handles the fame better, forging a massive mm. soul funk oriented solo career. Kind of like Prince, but better. Still going now. I've just seen him in London, sold out in front of 20,000 at the O2. With no Deep Purple connection for Richie to meet Ronnie, Dio has a middling career, never doing justice to his talent. Black Sabbath never find a singer that they consider worth replacing Ozzy with and never perform again. Richie Blackmore slides from band to band in the 70s, never settling and relying on session work. Um, a chance meeting with his old bandmate Chaz Hodges leads them to performing the Cockney Minstrels, a medieval Cockney knees-up crossover band, thus inventing a whole new style of music. They release a number of very successful novelty singles through the 1980s. The band's popularity collapses at its peak when Richie pulls down Chaz's trousers while being presented to the Queen at a London Palladium performance. They both die mysteriously within the next 12 months. <laughs> 
<laughs> David Coverdale has a successful career as a trouser salesman in red car, eventually <laughs> opening up a chain of shops called White Trouser Snake. I think that will do for now. Looking forward to the episode. <laughs> Cheers, Long Longford. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's really good. I oh, think he awesome. understood the assignment. That yes. was great. Yeah. Yeah. I must like have that. seen the movie. Oh, well done, yeah. 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 I like yeah. that alternate reality of uh, yeah. what could have been. Yeah. It's the deep purple multiverse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, I love the idea that David Coverdale just stayed in like the, the, the fashion industry and like hugely <laughs> successful. I'm pretty sure he would have been successful no matter what he did. Mm. You like measuring those inseams? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, darling. Oops. <laughs> Oops. I lingered. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. All right. So yeah. Um. I do have. Well, who, did we? Who? Or did we miss? Anything? Scott, did you go? ask him? Yeah, Scott did not. Yet. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, when you had uh, first sent out the notice, before I knew I was going to be on the show, I was going to make a video of me just slowly sinking down into oblivion, waiting to die, because <laughs> there's just no anything in the universe. You know, it, 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 if you think about all of the branches of the deep purple tree, it's really unbelievable how much this band has captured and, and created. I don't know of any other band that has come close to having the history or, or offshoots that they do. And, you know, thinking about like Ronnie James Dio, also Graham Bonnet, you know, he, he had no desire to be in rock and roll at all. He was happy with the marbles. So he would have never gone into this to be, you know, Alcatraz there would, well, and there may have been no Ingve. So, um, so many offshoots Coverdale tweets would be like, there's a sale on corduroy this weekend. <laughs> this is the year. Somebody kill me. <laughs> I mean, it's just we would not have the world we have today. Uh, but but per, on a personal side, I mean, I came to Purple uh, through Rainbow, through their um, Live Between the Ives concert um, on MTV and Finding Smoke in the Water and all that. But um, the I, I cannot fathom the hours I've spent either just listening for pleasure or learning or dissecting or playing, you know, as a drummer, any of their songs, any of the songs from the, the offshoot bands. Like I love to play white snake songs on drums and um, it, it's just, it's mind blowing how different it would be more. So I think than most other bands, the only other bands I would say would be maybe the Beatles or, really super early influencers like little Richard, if little Richard hadn't existed, I think music would be very, it would have found its way eventually, but it would not be the same, hmm. but purple's outreach is just, it's insane. And then, uh, you know, on a more personal note, um, the one time I got to meet Roger was, was great because he over anyone else in my life has been the biggest influence and to get to shake his hand and say, thank you for, everything was a pretty big moment. Um, when I met Ian Gillen, it was incredibly brief, but uh, at least I got to shake his hand and say, thanks. Um, met Glenn and Steve Morris on the same day within about 45 minutes of each other at the NAMM show. That was pretty cool. Um, still waiting to get my interview with Glenn, <laughs> but I'm hopeful. Aren't we all? Uh, yeah. And Steve <laughs> actually. Uh, but it, it, I've learned so much from them as a fan of music, as a musician, as a writer, that even just like what they've done with Mandrake Root alone, like that haphazard way that they play it on stage. And just the fact that they're not like, here's the song we played in the studio, we're playing it live, that so many bands do. I mean, their shows were shows. You know, they weren't performances of their music and there were not a lot of bands that were willing to take those chances and they did it every night. I I can't even fathom what the world would be like without their music or without me having connected. I, I still think I would have found Uriah Heep, but um, I don't know if I would have been into that music as much. I think probably, but, you know, I can't, I don't want to live in a world without Born Again or, you know. A world where midgets don't fall off a fake Stonehenge. <laughs> it's not fair. But yeah, I, I I I can't even fathom what my life would be without them. 
and meeting, you know, obviously all of you guys and the, the podcast and everything, which I thoroughly enjoy. It gives me great company when I go to walk to pick up my car, walk home from dropping it off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's funny because, you know, as, as we're recording this, um, the episode that I was on came out and I'm like, oh, sweet. They did. Have I heard this one? <laughs> I was on it. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's been great. But yeah, the 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 personal connection goes far beyond anything that I think any other band would ever come close to. And, and that includes Uriah Heep. And, you know, before Rich kicked me off of my own podcast and I found out there's no reason to continue with my Aerosmith show, <laughs> uh, which is just here tonight, um, you know, I, I wouldn't have been a podcaster either. That's so, awesome. There you go. All right. Yeah, I'm all emotional. I know, right? <laughs> Getting emotional, guys. Um, well, before we wrap it up, a few a few things. One is um, we do have a, a late breaking, timely um, segment here, and that is postcards from the edge. And this is from Connecticut. Um, this one, it's it's dated. December 25th, 2023. It's a beautiful snowy scene here. Ooh. You can see that. Beautiful. There's some cows in the in the in the in the farm or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's somebody is that in a sleigh. AI going by. generated. <laughs> beat, beat, beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the cows seem to have the right number of hooves, so I think it's hand painted. <laughs> um this one uh says Nate. Now have a merry old Christmas for you, darling. Signed Pete. And it's the, the reproduction of Winter Morning is from an original uh courier and Ives print. So I don't know if you have anything else to add about that, Peter, but I have another dozen in the collection. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you know what though that that to me that kind of scene is what i always think of uh for christmas i mean growing up in, in michigan which is not new england but uh it has its charm you know uh back then we had snow like that all the time in, in the winter time now it's different like now they go entire seasons where you can still see the grass which is just weird to me but that definitely has that christmas feel and i i remember christmas eve waiting for my dad to get home from work because he worked in retail um I would just be like, I was in martial arts, so I was doing a lot of stretching and I would sit there and just listen to the, the album Deep Purple, the third one, and just in my room with nothing but the Christmas lights on and, and just sitting on the floor and stretching, listening to, you know, like Bird is Flown and all those songs. And uh, that became my tradition every year to help pass the time. Um, but yeah, that, that, that postcard is really cool because that just really brings back those memories. Well done, Peter. And it, well, it reminds Scott, me send of... me your uh, send me your your postal address, and maybe I can send you one. Oh, I love that. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if you've seen the movie Christmas in Connecticut, Peter. Yes, I have seen that. Okay. Yes. Hey, there we yeah. go. Wow. It's a Christmas miracle. Hey. <laughs> it's, this reminds it's, me oh, of that oh. of that movie where they're traveling around on sleighs and things like that. It's going to be a short-lived address, though, Pete, because I'm trying to get out of Vegas before Rich comes back because it's my turn to buy dinner again. So <laughs> <laughs> much cheaper to move. And we're going to Piero's. <laughs> we're going to Piero's, yeah. So I'm just going to move. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think as as far as uh, Deep Purple goes, I think everyone really kind of kind of summed it up, and the kind of I think for me, for you know, until we started this podcast deep purple was like a very personal thing for the for the main reason that nobody wanted to talk to me about it except for john so occasionally you <laughs> would reach out and, we're, and even back when we were kids we were like no nobody we knew liked deep purple the same way that we did so it was right. like, that was always kind of like our thing yeah um and then in in reconnecting with john on a more regular basis and doing this show um every single week sometimes more than once a week um it, it it in reconnecting with an old friend that you know sometimes is just really they can fade away or you know you always have these great memories or you just don't talk that much and spending as much time talking to john as i have in the in these last years it made me wish i i, I had a, a, a i could do a podcast with a, a few of my other really good friends that i don't see as much you know like find some other subject that we could some other commitment that we have to 
meet some other deadline that we have to meet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like there's uh, other friends that I, you know, will text and back and forth and stuff. But the, the great thing about this thing with John and I is we've made this commitment to each other to do this every single week. So whether we want to or not, we're doing it and, <laughs> and we're, and we're, and we're talking and, and, and keeping the friendship probably stronger than ever. And, um, meeting all of you amazing people and talking to you all the time has, has been really great. And, um, I'd recommend anybody, you know, connect with an old friend that you're sorry that you don't talk to as much and Hey, start a freaking podcast with them and, and do it every week. And you'll, you'll have to, and it, it, it will bring you so much joy and laughter. And, um, it's amazing. The, uh, doors it can open for you, um, uh, you know, in the long run and, 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 in actually connecting every week and the mm. people that you meet based on whatever that subject is. Cause no matter what subject you have, no matter how obscure it is or whatever, you'd be amazed at how many people are actually going to want to tune in and listen to you talk about it. <laughs> and that's something that always surprised me with this, with this show. So, um, well, Nate, I've got two more Debbie Gibson true. albums to review. <laughs> 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 Shut up, just, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> but, you know, you you bring up a good point, Nate, because now that I'm thinking about it, um, in high school, you know, of course, I, I graduated in 90. So high school, starting in 86, it was like everybody was into Megadeth and Metallica and Iron Maiden and, you know, painting jean jackets and things. And, and there was nobody talking about Deep Purple at my school. It, it was my brother and I, I think we're the only ones that were into them that, that I'm aware of. Which is really weird because Richie being the prominent guitarist that he was, I would have thought that there would have been more kids. But it was a very isolating thing for a band that was so huge. Um, and maybe it was just the timing of it. But it, it was a very isolating thing to be a fan of the band because you're right. There was like nobody to talk to. And to Rich's earlier point, like finding, finding you know, you knew the internet was around and everything. But that moment when you're like, oh, I can find anything on the internet and I, I remember the first time I ever you know probably would have been you know around the same time that, that Rich w was talking about but finding the highway star and being like oh my god this is like a site all about Deep Purple and they post <laughs> all of these things and you know that you was know, we, you can't give that website enough credit I mean to yeah. this no, day the best. I, to this day I think it's still one of the best band you know up for a singular band websites on the internet it's unbelievable. And I mean, that was for me, I was, I'd literally check it every day. And the, the update section on the side there, mm -hmm. that's the Rich Shaler update thing, because I, they're like, Oh, what do you think of the website? Oh, yeah. It's great. I said, but I wish you guys would add something that like, just to show what's new, because I end up searching through every page, just trying <laughs> to find what, what you added. So they put that there for me because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Changing the lazy. world. And it's, I was going to say, it's yeah. funny because one time I was driving, I was hanging out in Connecticut and some girl drove by and yelled lazy at me. <laughs> <laughs> was it your <laughs> wife? <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic website. And, you know, when, when learning that there was, you know, that was what I would, would read. And it's funny that you mentioned, you, you know, you'd go to a website and you'd, just instinctively just uh print it <laughs> you're like a print <laughs> and then you mm -hmm. have all these things why did mm -hmm. i do you know it's not, it seems so alien to even do that nowadays mm -hmm. but you know you never knew like is this stuff gonna still be here i don't know how it works and so you just print it and you'd, i'd have like these folders <laughs> like print, <laughs> printed uh pages and pictures and every other thing it's um but yeah it was it was a good time and uh like i said met so many amazing people uh through this band in, in the recent years um, and, you know, definitely just all of those great tracks and times that John and I had had. We, we connected on so many other um, pieces of music um, that we would have still been friends in the same way, but uh, but we wouldn't have had this thing that was kind of like our thing. Mm. And, not because we didn't want anybody else to join us, because no one else was really interested. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Until recently. Now everybody wants in. Yeah, exactly. Everybody <laughs> wants in on this deep now that now that it's such a money maker. Um, but speak speaking of money makers, we do have to thank our foundation level patrons as well. Um, before we wrap up the show, so um, coming in at the three dollar and fifty cent deep purple New York tier, we have Lord Longford. 
At the three pound aromatic feed tier, we have Simon Ford and Richard Brees. At the $3.33 halfway to evil tier, we have Stephen Sharp and Duncan Leesk. And at the $3 nobody's perfect tier, we have Peter Gardo, Ian DeRosier, Mark Roback, Stuart McCord. Then we have. Ivan Fjellbu. Runar Siemensen. JJ Stenard. Ruinous Inadequacies. John Maselli. Michael Boyette and Corey Morissette. At the $1.71 I want my own tier tier, we have... At the 10 kroner tier, Karsten Lau. And at the $1 made up name tier, the Yuletide Disaster, Leaky Mausoleum. Steven Somerville, the Concerto 1999 fanatic, Hank the Tank, Private Eyes, Ashen Lionel. Steve, Down to Earth, Kohler, Zwapper, The Electric Alchemist, Anders Engstrom, Ashley, Still I Hear, Burn, Rose, and ICDC. Thank you to all of you for your generous support of the show. We couldn't do it without you, and a happy and Merry Christmas to you all. It so loses something indeed. without hearing all the little clips. Yeah. Oh, shit, did I forget? Yep. <laughs> I think after you, <laughs> after you screen shared with uh, with Peter, it, uh, it didn't yeah. come back after that. Yeah. Now you know what John goes through about 50% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got a question. A lot of awkward you, silences on the YouTube this week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, showing yes, yes. here on channel 18, your purple full life. And it says over here, because I printed everything out too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Leaky mausoleum. Where's Leaky mausoleum? Is... <laughs> oh, Leaky mausoleum couldn't make the, couldn't make the, uh, the special, I guess. Hmm. Ah. Uh, Must have gotten caught in a snowstorm. <laughs> <laughs> the crypt is frozen. <laughs> the, yeah. the leak is frozen solid. Oh, man. You know, that list is getting to the point where you're going to have to consider doing the Gilligan's Island thing and just being like, and the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering when we're going to get to that point. But now we've committed to 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 some... Uh, sound clips that people aren't going to want to see go so i don't know what we're going to do <laughs> the deep purple patron podcast where you just read the list <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and right? it gives me a, it gives me a nice complete um panic attack every every week as i'm like trying to fumble around with all the sounds <laughs> messing them up these were perfectly executed it's a shame you guys couldn't hear them. <laughs> oh they'll be on the audio feed right yeah they'll be on the audio the audio yeah. feed will be fine so yeah Oh, all right. Well, guys, Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, this you was a lot of Christmas. Fun. Happy holidays. Great getting together and having a nice little Christmas party. Like a, it's like the company Christmas party. <laughs> Nobody's wearing a lampshade on their head, though. We even had a PowerPoint. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the C CEO came in to give his boring talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Code of conduct. Uh, I know this is a party, but you're still at work. While oh, you're boy. eating your dinner, let me tell you about the company. Yeah. Right. Oh. I should have made it an ethics training. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, if you guys would stay after the call, yeah, we're going to do our annual harassment training because it's getting really close to the end of the year. <laughs> we're looking at you, Shaler. Yeah. yeah. Well, me? <laughs> hey, so, little known fact. Did you guys know that every time the smoke on the water riff is played, an angel gets his wings? <laughs> I did not know that. We got there a picture go. of him, yeah. 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 yeah, he only had one and a half wings, and he had eight <laughs> fingers, though. I think every time he plays, somebody gets an extra finger. <laughs> you know, yeah, but he had guys, a terrified child, so. A lot of those guys look like Shatner. <laughs> it was a mess. Total mess. So so when when you roll out of here, you should play a little, uh, little Glenn Hughes Christmas uh song you know i mean to... i think we should i think yeah, that's I think, a good idea yeah. i think yeah. i think on the audio feed you might you may even hear him playing right now 
Ooh. Hey, look, the magic. I'm rich AI Shaler. Uh, all right guys well thank you so much merry christmas to you all Mm. to all a good night cheers guys cheers merry christmas merry christmas oh 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 thank you for listening to the deep purple podcast If you like what you hear and would like more episodes in the future, please donate on Patreon to support the show. You can also leave us a review in Apple Podcasts to help new people discover the show. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for show updates. See deeppurplepodcast.com for more details. Thank you for listening.